I'm Michelle Barker, the Director of the Research Software Alliance. Uh, thank you very much to us for this opportunity to uh, share some information on work we've been doing called People Roadmap. Uh, there's a link to my slides there, uh, but it's also in, uh, contained in the agenda uh, in the notes section around my talk. So you can access them at any point. To give you a bit of background information uh, about RISA as context uh, for the activity uh, on the people roadmap, our vision is that research software and those who develop and maintain it are recognized and valued as fundamental and vital to research worldwide, which, which is, of course, uh, a vision shared by many uh, research software communities and other organizations in the research sector and individuals, uh, including some of you on the call today. And our mission is to bring those communities interested in research software together to collaborate on the advancement of the research software's ecosystem. All this is contained in the uh, recently uh, released strategic plan, if you'd like to read more details. So part of the reason why we formed was recognition that the research software community has happily developed uh, over many years to the stage where it's difficult now to know who's doing what. There's so many fantastic things happening at national or international level, disciplines on specific issues uh, like uh, you know, career paths or to create a particular infrastructure. Uh, so we were thinking about how, how would we really make it easier for people to find each other, to understand how well the ecosystem's functioning, uh, and to be able to analyze uh, where as a group we could be working a little bit better uh, to achieve uh, shared goals. RISA works across three themes, people, policy, and infrastructure. Uh, so people roadmap really is a way of framing questions to do with uh, the people theme. When we thought about how do we break down what does people mean? Uh, what are the different elements of, of a people theme? We decided to adapt uh, this fantastic strategy for culture change from Brian Nozick for Center for Open Science. Uh, we adapted this, uh, the, bottom, the second bottom line wording slightly uh, to identify these as five areas uh, that are needed in a people themed area. You, you could apply this of course to other themes as well. Uh, so we wanted to ask some questions for the people roadmap uh, with the aim of identifying opportunities for accelerating efforts to achieve people related goals. Uh, we wanted to understand who was working on each of these five uh, themes, if you like, within uh, the people area. We wanted to understand some things about how much they collaborate, what are some of the activities they do, uh, who funds them, and where they see opportunities uh, to do uh, more work or together or, or where there's gaps or particular priorities. So to do this, uh, we invited 28 organisations uh, to an interview, each an individual interview one-on-one -on -one to profile them. So this was the 28 organisations which are the projects that we covered. And this is really only a fraction of, of who we could have, of course, talked to. Uh, so this was just a sample to get us started, to see if the work would yield something interesting, if there was a way of structuring what we were finding uh, that would enable others to uh, find the uh, outputs useful. And so the organisations that were involved varied from very large international intergovernmental efforts like Elixir in the life science and European science cloud, uh, through to very small discrete projects uh, with a very short time frame to run, such as Site As, national efforts like uh, NESI in New Zealand. Uh, there are uh, specific infrastructures, infrastructures like the German Aerospace Center, and there are organizations that focus on particular areas uh, like the Code Refinery on Skills and Training. We asked them all uh, uh, the same set of questions, and those questions are in the draft roadmap. Uh, if you look again in the agenda where there's a link to my slides, uh, there's a link to the draft of the roadmap, uh, which you can go away and read and comment on and give input on. Uh, and it's also got a list of all the questions. And so we asked them of, of these five initiatives or themes, uh, do you have activities addressing all of these or goals or strategies? And these were the results. It was interesting to find that almost everyone now says they do something uh, to contribute to incentives. And by that, we mean career paths uh, and metrics and recognition for the people that support software. And most people actually say they also do something around developing community 
uh, to help people and some aspect of skills and training. You can see there was slightly less uh, saying that they did something in policy and infrastructure, although it's difficult to really define uh, what, for example, is an infrastructure that supports people themed issues and what isn't. Uh, something uh, like Elixir's tests uh, on software that enables you to uh, upload and, sorry, maybe it's just a registry, uh, share skills and, and training materials is very clearly supporting, uh, you know, skills and training elements of the people theme. Uh, but if we look at an infrastructure uh, that provides access to cloud computing, which is used by people, enhances their capability, enables them to collaborate with others, uh, is that also a people themed infrastructure? Uh, it's one of the kind of questions that we note uh, in the document is something that needs some more thought. We used a commercial software tool uh, called the Exactive Cognitive City to map all the results uh, because we were trying to see uh, how well everyone collaborates, uh, whether there were patterns, and who was working with who on particular things. Uh, so I've just got a couple of screenshots here to give you some example of what we found, uh, the rest of the information is in the report. So these are all the organisations, all the initiatives that said they had a skills and training focus, and the links between them shows who collaborates with who, although it's not necessarily only on skills and training focus. It's difficult to read, uh, so we can do more detailed analysis such as this that shows that certain organisations uh, are, are very key collaborators that uh, many other organisations interact with them. So no surprise to everyone, that this example is the Software Sustainability Institute, uh, the Carpentries and the Society of Research Software Engineering, uh, also uh, two of the other initiatives we profiled that had high uh, integration with a lot of other work, uh, I guess that's to be expected given that they have been such uh, pivotal initiatives for a long time uh, with an international focus and uh, therefore uh, of, of great value to many people in the community. We're at the stage now where we've finished this pilot and written up the draft. So as I said, please go and, and have a look at, at what we discovered and how we've written it up and give us some input. We'll also do a couple of public webinar, webinars sometime in November to get some broader inputs and share uh, the outputs uh, with a wider stakeholder group. And then we'll keep working on this in 2022. So one of the things we want to do obviously is enable more inputs. Uh, there's many more groups that could be profiled uh, to continue to add to the model uh, and you particularly need to include uh, some Global South initiatives because there's no representation from those at, at the moment. And that increased mapping uh, will enable us to continue uh, to think about where organisations could collaborate more, where there's gaps, where no one's working on something. Uh, there's also some information we have on who's funded uh, by who to see some patterns in that. And then we're also thinking about how we can then begin to create some communities uh, around particular areas or task forces to address particular goals uh, and who uh, in the research software community might like to lead those kinds of conversations so that together we can continue to work towards uh, shared goals of advancing recognition of research software and those who create it uh, by working together when it's applicable to do so and solving uh, some issues at international level uh, which are equally beneficial then uh, to our national discipline specific focus. So if you'd like to keep up to that, up to date with that, then subscribe uh, to our recent monthly newsletter. Finally, I'd just like to thank the Rock Trust uh, for the support for this project. Now for all the interviewees from the initiatives who contributed uh, their time and to the research steering committee uh, how to run this. So thank you very much. That's all for me.